Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Resident Evil style game in Unity and welcome to episode 15. In this tutorial we are going to start work on creating the UI for our inventory slash menu. Don't forget, click that subscribe button and click that bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. And if you've enjoyed this series so far, please feel free to check me out on Patreon or YouTube memberships where you'll earn things like early access, exclusive content, project files, and so much more. With that in mind, let's get to work. So last tutorial, we kind of expanded our level or area a little bit, and we have this glowing uh, kind of icon here, but nothing is there yet. So we're going to bring in the gun for this and place it just here and then we are going to get to work on that inventory. So I am going to create a new folder and actually while we're on that topic you may notice that the uh, layout has changed a little bit since the last tutorial. That's because I have now upgraded to 2019.3 and as of 2019.3 Unity does look a little bit differently, most notably the icons in the project window down here but everything is still fundamentally the same. So let's create a new folder and let's call this objects. So within here, this is where we're going to store all of our objects that we bring in. So things like key items, things like weapons, all that kind of stuff is going to be within here. So let's create a subfolder within that objects folder called weapons. Now in here, I'm going to bring across this gun which I use quite consistently in a lot of tutorials. And you can get this for free if you head over to the website, go download and assets, and you can find it under tutorial number 15 of Resident Evil. So for now, all I'm gonna do is just bring in the gun just to place here, just so as we can see that there is something there that is glowing. So in there, we'll find uh, this M9, and we'll just place it there. It does look kind of small. Uh, let's lie that down on its side. Uh, so we'll have 90 and 90. Um, let's rotate it a little bit as well. There we go. Is that aligned with whatever it is sat on? I don't think it is. And it just needs moving a touch to there. It's probably expand the size as well. 1.5, 1.5, 1.5. Okay. There we go. So let's just quickly see how that looks within our scene now. Let's turn Jake around. And yeah, we can just see the gun there. And there it is glowing. Awesome. Okay, so the biggest thing about this tutorial is going to be that inventory. The inventory is not complicated, but it requires so much constant maintenance to it to update and bring in new things and ideally what i want to try and get to at this point in this tutorial is at least half of it in place so we've dealt with ui before uh, let's go to our canvas right there and so far all we've got is the fade in and we've talked a little bit about what we've got going on here but this is where it really gets interesting so the classic resident evil has in, on this side we have things like exit file and uh, all the items that we've picked up uh, maps and whatnot so let's try and start designing some of that now a lot of this is just going to be kind of plain we may apply further textures uh, later on but as long as we get the basics down we're well on our way to designing this inventory so game object ui and let's start with a raw image and i'm going to double click to zoom out so we can see it and I think I'm going to turn off the post processing so we can see it a little better. So let's expand this all the way so let's anchor and stretch set the color to black and I'm going to turn off fade in as well just so as we can concentrate only on this inventory and we need to zero everything out so it stretches all the way across. Now, over this side, we need a grey panel. So, game object and UI, and let's go raw image again. The reason I'm using raw image is because if we do want to apply an image at any point, you know, as a texture, it could be easily done this way rather than go through everything all again. So, let's change the colour to a greyish kind of colour. 
uh, maybe about there. <clears throat> Let's use the rec tool and place it somewhere here. So I think maybe there. I think that should look okay. And at the top, we're going to have uh, an exit button. I, I believe in my mind that's what um, we're going to go for. So at the top, wants an exit button. Uh, then files and then maps and then some items here. So let's add in a button. So I know we haven't really explained too much on UI. Um, I'm going to hopefully try and explain a little bit about how a button works now. So a button fundamentally works the same as, in fact, you know what? I just realized we're the wrong way around. Silly Jimmy. So this needs to be over here. Button also needs to be over here. So a button basically gives us the ability to literally press it as long as we attach a script to it. We're obviously going to get more into buttons as we uh, delve more into C Sharp coding. Now this button we're putting in now is going to be the exit button. And this is likely going to be uh, the first button that we actually deal with. So I'm just going to expand it using that rec tool. The rec tool is fantastic for aligning things fairly neatly. As you can see, that's not too bad. So now let's give this button a name and that is going to be, should we have it capitals? Let's have it capitals. Exit. And let's change the color to white. And let's also have the font size quite large. Let's have this as 32 for now and probably bold. Maybe larger than 32, actually. Let's have that as... Let's try 56 and see how that turns out. It's probably not going to be perfect, but it doesn't matter too much. So now let's color the button in that classic blue color that Resident Evil has. So normal color, blue. And we're going to want probably a dark-ish blue. Probably about there. Looks like our text is too big, so we, let's reduce that. 54, let's do it 50. There we go. Okay, we'll stick with that. So now that is our exit button, but let's make this a little bit nicer than what it actually is. Let's change the UI sprite to, let's see. In fact, we keep it, we'll keep it as it is, to be honest, because mm, I'm not convinced by them. We'll, we'll keep it as it is. I guess we can always add a little bit around it. it. It really is dependent on how you want all of this to look. You know, there's no right or wrong way of doing this. A quick example would be uh, on the button itself. Let's add another UI element and let's go to raw image. Let's keep it white, but let's just stretch it a little bit beyond the button. There we go. And same with that. And then let's put that above the button. There we go. So we could have it like that. And in the game view, that's now what it looks like. Obviously, I'm going through this and I suppose it does feel kind of rushed. But if you take the time and perfect it, it obviously will turn out a lot better. Now, I know we haven't named anything here yet, but we will be naming them. Don't worry too much. Next thing we do is let's take that raw image and let's also take the button, hold control, press D to duplicate, bring them down a little to about there. And let's shrink to about there. That looks okay. And let's change that text to say, uh, what's this one gonna be? Files, I think. And same again, let's hold control, press D to duplicate those, bring them across. And that might be a little bit too big. So again, it's just a case of taking the time to um, get things looking just right. So files uh, about there. I'm gonna get rid of that and that and recopy them or rather reduplicate and have them about there. And as I say, you take the time to really do this better than what I have, um, maps. So that now looks like that. It's not perfect, but it's getting there.
I think this really could do with a bit of uh, texture, especially this uh, grey bit, but that doesn't matter too much right now. So now let's set the slots for each of those items. So this main raw image for the uh, main inventory section, I'm going to duplicate and I'm going to change to black. And I'm gonna shrink it down to roughly fit this section here. And I'm gonna stick with probably six items to begin with. Um, if you remember the old Resident Evil, the original one, you started with Chris, I think it was six, six there. So we'll do six. Now this should hopefully, yep, that doesn't look too bad. Could look better, but again, this is all down to how you refine it. So now we need the item slots. Now the item slots can be done a couple of different ways. You could use a raw image, but I'm actually going to use a button for each slot. So then we have the interaction to select them in this inventory. But I'm thinking right now we should probably uh, start naming our sections. So this main raw image that we have here, the very first one we did, let's name this as, in fact, let's sort the caps out, INV, short for inventory, background and here I'm going to have this as inv again short for inventory right sec and that's going to be for the right section and here what we shall do is place the button inside that raw image and this raw image we're going to say exit button same again with this raw image. This goes in, sorry, the button goes inside the raw image and this one says files button. Let's close both of them up. And then this button goes inside raw image two and this one is maps button. Let's close that. And this raw image, INV selection. So this main selection is going to be that area here. So inside there, let's right click, let's have UI, and then let's select button once again. So this button, let's place roughly here, and let's have it probably about that big. So a good way of measuring this is to duplicate it again, bring it to about there, duplicate once again, bring to about there. So you can see that size is pretty much perfect, to be honest. So once again, let's bring this over to about there. In fact, they could do with being stretched just a little bit more. So I'm thinking stretch to about there. That's good. Okay, duplicate and to there. And to there, and the last one to there. So now what I'm going to do is set the, all the colors of this to the same as these up here. So button, let's also rename uh, slot one. And we will have this one as slot two. So I'm gonna go across. So one, two, three, four, five, six, because that is how they're going to fill up as we get more and more items. So slot three, uh, this one will be slot four. This one is slot five and finally slot six. Now, here's a cool little trick that you can use. Let's do all the button color at the same time. So let's select all of those buttons, every single one. And now let's go normal color and select the little pipette tool there. And let's select that blue. And there we go. They all change the same color. Now we don't need the text inside. However, it may be handy to actually have the text in there. Now, the reason I'm saying this is because if we have something which we have multiple items of, i.e. we have ammo, which has, let's say 10 bullets, we do need the text on that particular slot. So the way this is going to work is let's make sure we're on the text here and let's shrink this down to about there. And now let's change the color 
to a very light green, which is how it is in the uh, actual game. So I'm going to color that hexadecimal value. And I'm also going to increase the font style to a bold color and also probably increase to 20. No, nah, it's a bit much actually. Maybe 16. I think 16 may do the trick. So I am naturally going to change this to 10 just for now. And let's have it aligned to the left. And let's bring it out just a little bit to about there. Okay, so our first slot is looking okay, and we'll probably bring in an image for this gun in the next tutorial. But for now, we're getting the basics down. So what do we want to do next? Well, make sure we're still on that text value, and then select these three little buttons there, and click on Copy Component. Now, if we click on this text in slot two, click those three little buttons again, and paste component values. And quite easily, we can shift everything into place. So it's the same color. Now we can do this with all of the text for the other buttons. So if we click them, let's say slot three, slot four, slot five, slot six text, you can see I've only got the text selected there. And now do the same again, paste component as values. And now let's go back to the original slot and let's copy the component values uh, so copy component and that's in the transform section and let's do the same for each of those so up here and paste component values and there we go it's placed it in the right spot for all of them so finally i'm going to turn off the text in five of those slots so we can just turn it off up here so now it currently looks a little something like this it doesn't look fantastic, I'll, I will admit right now. However, it all comes down to your development. It takes so much more time than what I have done here. Um, hopefully, if we press play now, we should be able to see just how these are working. Look, we can actually select them. So these buttons are all going to work just fine. So let's advance that just a little further. Let's go on these actual buttons and Let's take a look at the highlighted color. So the highlighted color is currently kind of a very, very light gray. I want to change that to a slightly darker version of this blue. So if I go on the highlighted color and paste, that, in fact, we've copied the green originally, haven't we? So we don't want that. Uh, so I'm just gonna take the blue code that we have paste it here in the right section and just make it a tad darker. So about there. And then I'm going to copy that hex code. And then let's go into slot two, three, four, five, and six, and set the highlighted color as that same color for all of them. So you can see here that having multiple items selected gives you the opportunity to perform the same action all at once. So now if we press play, we should see that the highlighted color is just a little bit darker. And obviously these ones are still highlighted in white, but that'll do for now. So up until this point, you can see just how far we are coming along here. And what I would recommend is at this point, take so much more time than I have done creating this section. Um, so next time, what we're going to do is we're going to add in uh, the other section up here. And I'm thinking we should probably add some um, sound effects. So obviously, when we open up the menu, we want the sound effects. So we're going to have that open up menu script, and we're also going to build this section up here. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.